Welcome to the Goldmark Gallery here in Uppingham and this new show of Anometta Yotsoi. This is the third time that we've shown Anometta. We showed her first in 2012. I had met her three or four years before that when she had a little stand at Rufford and she was showing a few pots and I was immediately knocked out by, uh, you know, both by her and the quality of the work, something very special. And I bought a few for us to try at home and asked her if she remembered to bring a few, if she was coming back to Rufford the next year to, to bring some more for me, which, uh, which she did. She was um, at that time no stranger to England because she had done her apprenticeship with great Phil Rogers in the early 2000s, round about, round about 2000. So modest is Anometta that it took nearly, I think nearly four years to persuade her that she was good enough to show here. And her first show was tremendous. We filmed it um, and I remember Jerry going over to Bornholm, um, which is the little island off the coast of Denmark where she lives in a converted cow shed and making a, a film. It's a strange world that we live in now. We showed that film and it was picked up by, um, I think it was Danish television and they showed it in Denmark and it was watched by the Queen of Denmark who then had a state visit to Bornholm and the cowshed. Uh, that was filmed for Danish television and that someone put that online and the next thing is we're being asked for an article about Anna Meta for an American magazine that had picked it up and so it spread. And we, we had this extraordinary thing. Here are we in this little town of Uppingham in the middle of the UK. And there's Anna Meta in on the island of Bornholm, working out of this converted cow shed. And the message of what she was doing goes out around the world. Well, now we are privileged to look after Anometta on a worldwide basis. This show, she has spent the last three years making and it is just phenomenal. Every piece considered. Very special show and a, a very special person. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to our 2020 exhibition of ceramics by Anometta Yortsoi. It's December here in the UK, we're in the depths of icy winter here, it's freezing cold outside, but there is something about the, the colours and the textures in this wonderful, wonderful show that feels very apt right now. It feels very wintry and autumnal. I'm really looking forward to showing some of you uh, these, these pots today.
Animetta has a special place in our hearts here, I think, at the gallery. I think it's fair to say. It took Mike Goldmark, the boss, a number of years to convince Animetta that her pots were worthy of, of, of being shown, of being, uh, of being exhibited here in the gallery. But we're so delighted that she did. She had her first exhibition with us here in 2012, so this is now eight years on. The pots you see here have been made over the last four years since her, her last exhibition in 2016. There are just shy of 600 pots for this exhibition. That's an extraordinary achievement. They arrived here uh, about uh, three or four weeks ago and we unboxed them here uh, upstairs in the gallery. And uh, as we were uh, revealing these pots from, these, uh, from their, their cardboard boxes, getting these, uh, these pots out, we realised what a, a beautiful show Animata has left us with. Of those nearly 600 pots, almost half of them have already sold. Uh, this is the first time that we've been able to, to show you around the, uh, the exhibition. It's only just gone up uh, and of course we have been in lockdown here in the UK so we haven't been able to have people coming into the gallery. That just shows you, I think, what a, a wonderful following of, of enthusiastic users of her pots Animetta has, uh, including almost all of us here at the gallery. Uh, it's a, a miracle, in fact, that this show is, is here, that we didn't snaffle them all ourselves and take them home for, for Christmas presents. But it also goes to show that Animetta's work is the kind that can bridge almost any cultural divide, that anybody can feel would fit in their home, would fit in their kitchens, in their sitting rooms, uh, into the, the daily routines of their lives. It's, I know it certainly has for many of us. I'm going to take you around now and show you some of the fantastic pots in this exhibition. Animetta works on the island of Bornholm in, uh, in, in Denmark. It's a, a tiny island in the bottom of the, the Baltic Sea. It's actually closer to the, to the coast of Sweden. And it's very famous uh, for its, uh, its, its history of ceramics. It's a, an island with a great geological history to it. And over the last two, three, four hundred years, there's been a strong tradition of potters working on the island, and particularly of strong women potters. That's something that Denmark has uh, uh, native to it. Uh, people like uh, Gertrude Vesegaard has worked on the island for a long time, heroes of Animetta Zone. I think the pots that we'll see here today show just how far Animetta has come and just how much she has. Um, established her own place in that wonderful uh, canon of potters. You will see a huge variety of colours and textures in this show. Bornholm is an island that is rich in, uh, in materials used in ceramics and Animetta has made it uh, part of her, her personal mission in the time that she spent working in Bornholm to explore the island, to use as much local material as she possibly can. She has spent many years uh, researching local clays, processing uh, many of the materials that she finds, processing them into, into slips uh, for her pots, into glazes, using a lot of the, um, the material that she finds. It's an island of great beauty, of great dramatic rock formations, buffeted by the winds, of wonderful rich colours in the pine forests, uh, the icy waters that surround it in winter and the snow that descends upon the island. I've never been to Bornholm. I've seen it in some of the films that we've made of Animetta working from her, her um, converted farm uh, studio on the island. But as we walk around this exhibition and we see some of these beautiful pots, things like these wonderful um, high round-shouldered vases. Uh, we've got one here in a Tomoku glaze with a porcelain slip. When we see some of these pots, I feel like I've been there. I feel like I know the island. There is something about the way that Animetta has worked with the materials there that produces pots that just reflect this beautiful, beautiful landscape around her. As we walk around this show, and I'll show you some of these pots over here, um, you'll see a number of things that we have come to expect from Animetta's pots, some of her, her favourite forms of ours, but also a number of new things that she's been working on. Over here we've got a, a trio of beautiful uh, square and rectangular press moulded bottles. These have become almost Animetta's signature work. And you can see from the beautiful salt glaze decoration on these that salt glazing is a big part of what Animetta does. 
These have been made with uh, a couple of different slips, rich, iron rich for this uh, red cobalt. And there's something about the texture of salt clays, this wonderful, what's often termed as orange peel texture, which is achieved when the, uh, the salt reacts with the, um, the silica in the, in the clay to make this beautiful glaze. There's something about this texture that just feels right in Animetta's pots. It feels so redolent of um, this wonderful salty landscape that she lives in. These square bottles are dotted around in this exhibition. They show off a number of her different glazes, different slips, beautiful colours and textures. And each one taken on their own, I think, whether it's uh, abstract in design or whether it has uh, actual reflections of the landscape around her, things like some of these little grasses and flowers or abstract designs like this. This could almost be a sort of a field down here with a lovely sun or moon above it. No matter what it is that decorates these pots, these square and rectangular pots, they seem to capture everything about her work, everything about the place that she lives in and what she is trying to do with clay and materials. I know she said in the past that these are a, a, an enjoyable form for her to use. It's um, getting her away from the wheel uh, and onto something that's almost like a canvas, um, a lovely expanse of clay, a lovely flat surface that she can decorate on. We'll see a number of the decorations that she makes on these pots dotted around on others here as well. But as you can see from up here, we'll look at a couple of these pots up here, Animetta's pottery is rooted in function. It's rooted in, in use. Uh, pots that become part of our, of our daily lives. We've got her lovely characteristic oval dishes up here. Wonderful for baking in or for serving uh, wonderful hot potato salads and things. Lidded jars, beakers, and a beautiful jug up here in the corner. And then to show you something different, if you come over here and look down here on this uh, bench with me, we've got a couple of different forms here. The first is another press molded pot. This is a press molded dish, uh, a platter. Um, you'll see these in a larger uh, shape as well. This is actually one of my very favorite pots in the exhibition. This is one of Animata's uh, lovely motifs, these beautiful fish hanging on the line here, maybe smoking, um, smoked fish, a uh, big part of Scandinavian culture. I think this is just such a lovely, lovely part, a lovely dish for, for serving. It's got a beautiful, very simple shape, very simple form, that just lends itself to her decoration. As you can see here on the bottom, this wonderful blush in the clay. Animetta's pots are all wood fired. They're wood fired in a, in a two chamber kiln, I think. One of my favorites there. And then very excitingly over here, one of Animetta's new butter dishes. I love, love, love these whimsical unicorns and goats and figures that she's put on her on her, her butter dishes as the handles. They're actually surprisingly ergonomic. If you try and uh, use one to lift. And again, in the salt glaze, this is one of those shapes with these wonderful sharp edges where you can see the color sort of almost pulls away. That you can really enjoy all of the effects, all of the wonderful, almost random decoration of the salt landing and affecting the, the clay. If you've, uh, if you've ever, if you follow Animetta on Instagram, you might have seen before she, uh, she fires a kiln, a couple of figures dotted around her, the, the top of her kiln, the, the kiln gods that she has there. These are quite similar in, in shape to those. They're a really lovely, whimsical addition to her pottery, I think. So these butter dishes, some of our favorites 
among the new things in this show. It's not just us that have been enjoying Animetta's pots over the years. Uh, you'll see from our exhibition catalogue uh, for this show um, that the wonderful Nigel Slater, uh, who's a, a very famous established cook and food writer here in the UK, has penned the, the text for Animetta's catalogue. This is a really beautiful production. Uh, we're, we're very, uh, very lucky to have had his, his uh, endorsement uh, for this exhibition. He's been using Animetta's pots for a number of years now uh, and, um, like so many of us here at the gallery, finds that they just work for food. There is something so humble in them, so uh, beautifully attuned to the world of, of, of everyday living, of, of cooking and serving food and of sharing, that makes them very special to use, very special to, to serve food in, whether it's for everyday use or for a special occasion. A lovely, lovely catalogue. Do pick up a copy if you can. You can see from the scoreboard just how many pots have found new homes for this exhibition, even before it's officially opened. And then as we come here, we can see even more, a broader range of the wonderful daily functional pots that Anameta makes. It's often some of these smaller pots that are my favourites, things like these little beakers and cups. It's on these smaller surfaces that I think you can really appreciate all of the wonderful variations that the salt and these various slips or applied glazes that the Animetta uses that she's been formulating over the years, uh, where you can see all these different effects coming together. This is a really beautiful one, I think. You have this lovely deep red slip that Animetta uses a lot. It's got this wonderful, almost russet colour. Perfect for this time of year, this deep red. And then with the salt that gives it almost this metallic sheen, you have this beautiful contrast. And then, because Animetta's pots are wood-fired, you have a lot of natural ash circulating around the kiln, falling and landing on, on, on raised surfaces, on edges. You've got this beautiful ash glaze that then comes in, this deep, deep olive colour. It's almost the colour opposite to this lovely, rich red, and they make for a wonderful pairing. You'll see that on a number of these pots. So I pick up this beautiful bowl here, where the inside has had all this wonderful salt accumulating. This side that's been shielded from the salt contrasts with this face. And then down here, these beautiful poolings of ash again. On this shelf below, we've got uh, some pots in Tomoku glaze. Tomoku is one of my very favourite glazes. This lovely, rich, deep black. It's a kind of colour that you don't really, I don't really feel you get anywhere else. It's, it's sort of, um, it's true and pure to, to ceramics. Uh, one of my very favourite glazes. I'd just like to show you one of the lovely effects that Animetta manages to get with her pots. One of the many things that uh, make her pottery her own is, uh, are the stamps that she uses. These are stamps that she's made herself, that she's uh, made from clay, and they've got a, a lovely variety of patterns on them that she can use to make these repeating decorations, these repeating styles and motifs. It's on glazes like Tomoku, which breaks to this beautiful, um, rich, rusty red colour, rusty brown colour, or uh, on pots with salt glaze, where the salt gets to catch around the edges of these stamps. It's where you get real variation. It's such a, a simple thing to do with pots. It's such a simple way of getting decoration, variety and surface out of them. But it's something that she does so well, and something that makes her pots instantly recognisably her own. I'd like to show you a shelf that's one of the best kept secrets in this show. Just tucked away in this corner here. We've got some more 
beautiful salt glaze here, and you can see some of those stamps I was just talking about on the sides of these pots, picking up all of that beautiful surface decoration that the salt brings with it on this teapot. But then up above, we've got five tea bowls in a variety of different glazes and different shapes. Animetta's research into the local materials on Bornholm has been ongoing since she's lived and worked there. And it's in the last five years or so um, that that's really borne fruit. There is such a huge variety in the, in the different clays and the different um, uh, rocks and, and, and minerals and materials that she's using, the different ash glazes, different types of wood that she's working with. It's almost overwhelming for her, I think, working with all these different things. And she's worked to sort of pair that back to those that, that are um, either work consistently or are um, so beautiful that it's, it's worth putting up with their, with their difficult temperaments. So this first bowl up here, which reminds me ever so much of old Korean style rice bowls and tea bowls. Anameta's tea bowls have a kind of Korean feel to them. There's something about these edges, which is very similar to old, old style uh, tea bowls. This is in a, a local earthenware clay uh, that she's been working with. It's got a local um, China clay slip on it and a feldspar glaze. And it gives it this beautiful, beautiful, muted, almost sort of pinkish gray color. It's just the most beautiful, understated bowl. And it feels completely timeless. It feels like this bowl could have been around for thousands of years. It's got this wonderful serenity to it. Then we've got this bowl, porcelain slip and an ash glaze. And just look at the wonderful fluidity here in this surface. This beautiful colour that this combination of, of slip and glaze has brought out. It's almost got that rabbit's fur quality you can sometimes get in, in Tomoku, this beautiful texture in here. And then as I turn the bowl so that you can see the inside, isn't that beautiful? This wonderful, rich caramel colour offset by these blue streaks in this bowl. Here we've got a nuka glaze. That's a glaze that's traditionally made from rice husks, an ash glaze, with a, a crackle slip. This crackle quality you'll see in a, a couple of Anametta's pots. It provides a wonderful kind of natural decoration, a natural texture and contrast. And you can see in these five bowls that I'm showing you, almost the sort of reflections of the seasons, the colors that you get on the island of Bornholm. The different colors you get in the rock formations, some of them hundreds of millions of years old. Here's another bowl with a nuka glaze on it. You can see that the, the, the nuka glaze has got this beautiful effect where it's a little thicker and where we've had some of the ash landing on the bowl. Look at this beautiful color in here. This wonderful deep orange against the kind of creamy caramel colour of the nuka. And then finally we've got one more local earthenware clay. the local glaze on it too. Again, such a simple form, such a simple shape. But the fact that it's been done using these local materials with which Animetta has such a deep relationship with now, and the effects of her kiln, 
it's given this very simple bowl. Very, very powerful feel. We've got some lighter pots here. We've got more of that beautiful nuka glaze that we saw uh, on a couple of these pots down here. It's a wonderful big serving, uh, serving bowl or a mixing bowl down here. I've got a similar one at home and it gets used every day. It's a, it's a fruit bowl, it's for making uh, doughs in. It's wonderful, completely versatile. But up here also we've got some pots in porcelain and a couple of Anamata's beautiful teapots. A lot of Anamata's work has been exploring how simple changes to a simple form uh, can completely change the characteristic of a pot. So you look at these oval dishes here, and we've got more stamp decoration. And then you look at the ovals in her teapots. They come from the same basic principle, that same oval shape. But a slight change in the angle of the walls, and you get a completely different feel. That's how these teapots were, were designed. That's where the, the, the shapes come from. And they give this wonderful face for the decoration of her, of, her, of her kiln, the decoration of her glazes to work on. We've got a couple in a cellars in glaze here. It's got an, a slightly more of a sort of opacity to it. It's got this beautiful uh, icy blue colour. And then a little greener, a little warmer, the ash glaze that's on these pots here, which on the porcelain, you can really see the colour in this beautiful olivey colour. Bornholm is an island of, of much uh, pine wood. Uh, there's a, there's uh, pine forests dotted about on the island, and I think it's pine that she, um, that Anamata uses to, um, uh, to fire with. Um, and that's where we get some of this lovely colour in this ash glaze. We'll just have a look at the, the surface of this porcelain. This beautiful sort of crackly quality in the glaze. The longer you look at Animetta's pots, the more beautiful colour and texture and form you find to enjoy and to explore. Over on this table, we've got a couple more of these larger platters from the one that I, I showed you earlier which I think would be really perfect for serving a Christmas dinner, say, uh, given that we're now in December. Really beautiful new shape in Animetta's work. It's a lovely, again, a lovely surface for all that beautiful decoration, for that wonderful uh, varied effects of the kiln, of the various glazes that she's got. This one, look, the way she's managed to get her glaze her, and her slip to work together, this is almost like a a snowy landscape on the island with these grasses sticking out. These incised decoration marks here. We've got more of that lovely, deep, rich, velvety nuka glaze down here. Um, this is one of my very favourite of her, her shapes, these big hollow dishes. They're almost like a sort of bird bath. And I've seen them, one or two, photographed outside uh, with water in them, with beautiful flowers in them. This one's rather lovely. It's got nuka around the outside and then this beautiful circle of tomoku in the middle. This beautiful contrast that tomoku and nuka go, to, go together quite nicely. And then up here, we've got some of that fantastic colour that Animata gets using porcelain slip, uh, ash glaze and this, this wonderful red, red clay. It's a colour that's got such wonderful depth to it. You look on this rectangular vase, this beautiful range of colours and how some of these incised marks, these incised decorations, where the glaze really pulls, you get this wonderful, very deep, very dark colour that contrasts so nicely with 
these sort of lighter patches over the cross of the face, over the, the face of the pot. Just as a lot of the local clays, the local slips and, and, and glazes that she works with are drawn from her local materials, Annemet is also often looking to the world around her, the landscape around her, for inspiration in, in form and in decoration. It's not always literal, but there's always a, a feeling of connection between where she works, this island that has so much history to it, and the shapes that she's, that she's making and working with. You can see on this lovely vase, this pumpkin vase, how the shapes of, of gourds and, and uh, vegetables and plants lend themselves to her, to her pottery. This is rather nice with this crackle slip across it that sort of catches in these, in these divisions in this form. And in fact, if you look really closely in some of these crackles, you can see the beautiful pinky reddish colour of the clay beneath. It's very, very subtle, but you can probably just about make it. Because of the way that Anametta works with her materials, there are some lovely stories to some of the things that are uh, involved in her, in her pot, some of the, um, the different glazes and, and, and slips that uh, uh, get applied to her, to her work. Over here we've got um, some of my very favourite parts actually, these beautiful shallow bowls with this inlaid porcelain. We've seen that on a couple of the pots in this exhibition, something that Anamata has been including in her pottery for a, a number of years now. It's a really beautiful effect. Just a lovely sort of offset design and decoration in her work that looks very natural. But the interesting thing about these pots are that we've got um, not just a, a local uh, clay being used here, but also uh, a local ash glaze. The ash that this glaze has been made from, and that's on some of these pots here as well, is in fact from uh, bundles of straw. Now, Anametta took over the, um, the farmhouse that she and her partner uh, have been um, slowly renovating and using as a, as a studio over the last 10 years. And when they took it on, there were uh, nearly a thousand bundles, bales of straw there that had been stored over a number of years. In fact, they were so old that some of them had been tied and, and uh, wrapped by, by hand. And it's taken her a, a number of years to get through that, that straw burned and used as, as ash in, in her glazes. That ash needs processing and filtering to make it work, but it's a, a really lovely touch, I think, to think that some of the, the glazes on these pots have been made from uh, straw bales that have been there for who knows how many years. Uh, sort of a, a history to, the, to the, the past of that place that she's now working in. It's got a very similar feel, that cool, quality to the Nuka glaze on, on some of these other pots that we've got up here. There is so much in this exhibition. There are so many pots that f just for space aren't out here on the shelves um, that we could have shown you today. Um, I'm sure we will delve into more of what's in this show over the coming weeks, get some things out and show you them in, in, in more detail. I hope this has been a, a nice taster though of, of what's, what's here in this fantastic exhibition. I've been living with Anametta's pots for as long as my family have been collecting them, uh, since before she had her first exhibition here at the gallery. So for a very long time they've been part of my life, they've been part of the, the daily routines, the, the breakfasts, lunches and, and dinners from my, from my childhood. I remember a time uh, when I was at university and I was miserable. I was on the wrong course, I didn't know what to do, I was down in the dumps and I was sitting around uh, not knowing what to do. And a finished version of that first film that we made with Animetta back in 2012 uh, was uploaded uh, and I got to see it for the first time. And that film that was made gave me such a, an important uplift. 
I can't tell you how much of a, of a difference it made. There were a number of remarkable, um, poignant things that Enemeta said in that, in that film, and if you've not seen it before, do please go away and, and watch it after this. But one of them that really struck me and that has stayed with me ever since was Enemeta talking about how there are enough beautiful things in this world. As a potter, what you are doing is irreversible. Turning clay into pots, for her, is a deeply responsible act. She feels very profoundly that she has to make the very best work that she can to justify changing clay into something that can't be then changed back, into adding more stuff to a world that has already got too many things in it. I think you can probably agree with me, having seen the pots in this exhibition, and as I show you some more in the coming weeks, she needn't worry. The things that she produces are so beautiful, bring so much joy and pleasure and fulfilment to people's lives, and have done so for a number of years now, that she need not worry that what she's doing is, 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 uh, is in vain. But that single comment, that, that honesty, that humility, and that sense of personal responsibility as a, as a creative person that she showed in that video says everything about her. And it's a comment that has stuck with me for a number of years now, which I try to, to take to heart whenever I am uh, trying to produce something uh, of worth and of value uh, in this world. It's something that I think we can all uh, take to heart, that we could all uh, enjoy and, and learn from. But it's what I needed in that moment, and it's what Animatis Potts for a number of years have, have given me, that wonderful solace, that wonderful uplifting hope that there are beautiful things out there and that there is great beauty and joy to be found in the world of ceramics. It's sometimes difficult doing these walkthrough exhibitions to, to find the right words to really say just how special something is, to say how much something might mean to you, how much something has moved you. I feel a really profound feeling that when I talk about Animata's work, or if I write about Animata's work, that I need to do justice to it, and that I need to do justice to her for what she has given us in her parts and what she has given me personally in the work that she's made. Sometimes it can be difficult to find the phrase, the words that, that get that across, that tell you just how much some of this stuff can really mean to us. But if any of you have ever had a favourite part, ever had something that has made you feel that way, I'm sure you will understand what I'm trying to say right now. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing some of the pots in this exhibition and that over the coming weeks we can introduce you to more of them, show you them in more detail. Really, when we can't find the words to describe them, the best thing we can do is let you enjoy them, let you see some of the beautiful colour, the beautiful texture, the wonderful decoration that someone like Animetta can get into clay. I hope you've enjoyed today. There's more to come soon.